<laughs> one of my favorite movies. We watched this movie, I swear, probably 10 times a day. Mm-hmm. I don't know how we found so much time, but 10 times a day. We're talking about Shatas. Yeah. And that movie there, when you really think about it, that was probably your least speaking that you've done in a movie. That was my, uh, I, I thought as the actor, mm-hmm. I'd give myself the challenge of not saying much, but yeah. bring over the intensity that you'd never forget this guy. Didn't say a word. Mox but done if, him. Yeah, mm-hmm. he was just in your face. His gaze were distant. Yeah, <laughs> and, yeah and he was loyal to the mm-hmm. bone, mm-hmm. you know. So these were all the traits that gangster so you added that and a little bit of psychotic you know you see that close up of him smoking that cig and when you pull back it's It's somebody that part part sticks out in my mind the most is when you smoke and then you just how you just chuck the arm in in the garbage it's like and just 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 look sick of it Yeah, Yeah. yeah and then you write 33 and then you come back and put the one in blood and that that laugh is yeah. what was so evil, and you yeah. felt that in your core. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, and ran away. Yeah, I yeah. mean, when he cut that man's neck, oh. everybody in the theater was quiet. Nobody spoke, and I, I'm always very, uh, <laughs> I'm always very tickled by it. Uh, yeah. Whenever I I watch it, yeah, that scene when they walk away. And Max steps out, everybody becomes quiet, and yeah. nobody says another word until the scene is done. Yes, it's so because it's that crazy. So, I guess you would say that's your favorite part of Shatas? No, no, yeah. not at all. What's your not favorite scene in Shatas? I don't have a favorite. I, I think it was all beautifully woven together, you know. I mean, the kids mm-hmm. with that drink struck yes. in the beginning. Yes. I mean, there you go again, wanting mm-hmm. to elevate themselves, whatever way they knew how. I mm-hmm. mean, you know. Me see how going down a Rasta Neville Yard, yes. you know. <laughs> go, you know. So it moved from there to there, you know. Mm-hmm. And uh, sometimes if we only could channel all that wonderful energy into some positivity, yeah. it would be so wonderful, it's wouldn't it? so crazy. And how Amen. did that movie all come together in the first place? Wow, that's another story. Which yeah. I think uh, mm-hmm. it's going to come to light one of these yeah. days. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yes. That's, that's crazy because, as I said, that it became a cult classic off a of bootleg. Yes. Before it even came out, because it was years later the official one came out. Oh, man, I, it, why I th- thought it was such a phenomenon is that it hit the streets. It was on the streets for five years. Yes. And then Sony picked it up, mm-hmm. dusted it up, <laughs> put a new soundtrack on it yes. from the Marley Brothers. Mm-hmm. And put it into Best Buy and Target all of the major departments stood and you could never get a copy. Mm -hmm. You're right. You know what I mean? You're 1,000%. It's like it lived two times. For the fact that Sony would pick up a movie that's been on bootleg for five years and they're going to pick it up and it still does so amazing, that's crazy right there. No, what what is happening is that the streets speak. And if you are Sony, you're mm-hmm. going to be attached to the streets. Mm-hmm. You've got to know what's going on because the man who drives the Bugatti in the air-conditioned mahogany room doesn't know anything about the streets. Oh. Ask him about Mulholland Drive. Uh, he knows. Yeah. But nothing about y'all, dog. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he knows nothing about that. That's that, uh, boy, that's lit, dog. Yeah. You know, he knows mm-hmm. nothing about mm-hmm. that. So... You have folks that he hired to mm-hmm. go out there and say, hey, man, this is what's the hardest thing. Yeah. So it's been there for five years, mm-hmm. and the numbers are steady. Uh, every household that you go into, they got a copy of Shutters. It was crazy. I remember uh, when I first learned that it was um, pilfered. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it, uh, I have a friend of mine who lives in London. Okay. And I am calling me up and say. Yeah, Paul, do you know what I'm just watching? Uh, I said, no, Anton, what are you watching? She says, your latest movie, mate, 
Fucking hell. <laughs> Go. God blind me, mate. This is fucking hot. And I'm like, and he's describing stuff, and I'm like, no, man. No, man. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, no. Yes, yes. Yeah. So, gone. So, but uh, that's so, you know, heart wrenching, you know, all the effort put into it, and it goes. Do you think it was a blessing or a curse or a combination of both? Ah. Uh, from if you know the story from my perspective, uh, I just think it was um, just a curse. Yeah, it was a curse that it was pilfered. Um, I think if it was handled properly, like yeah. it should be, yeah, um, there would have been a um, shot at thirty, shot of fifty, yeah, shot of a hundred, mm -hmm. shot of one, two, three, four, five. You know. Uh, and this could go on and on. New actors coming in. Mad Max have a son, a bastard yeah. son. <laughs> he now was in prison, now he's out. Yeah. You know? yeah. uh, that kind of vibe, mm -hmm. you know. But there was no management, you know. Yeah. And that's what uh, some of my folks failed to have then, truly. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it, when you make a film, mm -hmm. it, it, it's an effort by many people, my brother. Have you ever sat there after the movie Holy done and smokes. watched the credits yeah. and see all the names going up? Mm -hmm. Even the guy who run for the coffee and go get the lunch, yeah. His name is in His there. His name is in there, but it's an effort by all of these folks. And when all these folks come together and get this done, mm -hmm. and uh, it's there on the, getting in the machine or whatever, and press recorded run off and something else and it's on the street in yeah. 10 minutes and all of this goes down the drain i mean yeah there are other folks making money but people who never sweat a day in their lives in regards to this project yeah you know so it's grossly unfair man but that's the way of the uh, new world i think at that time there it was just across the internet was just really bubbling at that time mm -hmm. dvds were just bubbling we weren't into streaming like how we are right now no, yeah. so it's almost like it was a couple years too early to really reap the benefits of what's going on right now yeah if it yeah. had came out right now today it would be a different ball game right now listen man it would uh well it's small screens that rule now mm-hmm you know, nobody's interested in it. I mean, you, yeah, you go to the home and you see that, but mm -hmm. I mean, most of the hours of the day, it's the phone, you know? Yeah. <clears throat> so, yes, it would. So I think they're also considering um, doing a part two. Okay. Mm. I know that at one point there was actually supposed to be a series. Well, yes, there is. In fact, if you go to uh, YouTube and um, put top, well, just called Top Shutters yeah. TV series. Okay. Yeah, we shot, uh, well, two episodes that I know of and uh, okay. it stopped. Yeah. Any reason in particular? <laughs> yes, yeah. but uh, and I'm not uh, able to divulge at okay. this time, you know. Yeah. But, um, yeah, it stopped, and uh, I was hoping that it would, but it's been a couple of years now since mm -hmm. that stopped. Um, what it was, in fact, was a prequel, is that what they call it? Yeah. yeah and not necessarily like the movie. Mm -hmm. So, shot of the movie has been in court as well for many years. Yeah, man, it's all of that excitement. Okay. But, um, but I think uh, all, all the kinks are probably ironed out yeah. and now. And uh, they're looking forward to um, resurrecting the part two because Shutters has become iconic, has been it, iconic for, you know, I mean, generations yeah, yes. of yeah, people, yeah. yeah. I, like I say, kids are talking about, yeah, Marx, Marx down there. Right. I'm like, oh, these kids, you know, yeah. 20 years ago, they're 18, they're 17, they're 15, they're 12, you know. That's so, so yeah. crazy. Why do you think... When it comes to the gangster roles, mm -hmm. you're casted and then you're so believable in those roles there. Oh, and, me? Yeah. And you're not that person on an everyday basis. Oh, that's great. Then tell, are you trying to tell me I'm a great actor? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> what a way to say it, eh? <laughs> All right. But um, no, I like, um, I, I like. This podcast is brought to you by www.twolinedmusica.com.